Seriously, I'm not sure what's in the water over at Polk Audio, but I think we just discovered another gem in their lineup. If the R700s are just out of reach, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. The X-T60 is Polk Audio's answer to those looking for an entry-level tower speaker. Resting just below the top of the line X-T70, it's the smallest floor standing model in the range. I love a small tower for two reasons. They often perform like bookshelf speakers, only with a bit more bass, but unlike bookshelf speakers, small towers don't require the added investment of speaker stands, saving you money in the end, or at least leaving a little bit more in the budget for a better receiver or amplifier. This speaker has a one inch fabric dome tweeter, a six and a half inch woofer, and two six and a half inch passive bass radiators. Polk states that the XT60 has a frequency response of 38 hertz to 40 kilohertz, and given the modest size, driver complement and price, that's pretty good. Sensitivity is rated at 86 dB with a nominal impedance of 8 ohms, making the Polks easy enough to drive and mass market receiver friendly. While the XT60s may not turn any designer's heads, Polk hasn't totally skimped in the looks department, giving the speakers contrasting heather gray grills, which is a nice touch, and more than I can say for the grills that come with the far more expensive R&L 1961 towers. The speakers themselves appear to be elevated above an attached plinth that, at first glance, made me think they had a downward firing port, but this isn't the case. The plinth is purely cosmetic, though it does add an element of stability, which can be good for those of you with kiddos or pets. During our review, we used the XT60s as part of a Polk XT home theater system that included the matching XT35 low profile center speaker. We used two different AV receivers, the Denon X1700H and the brand spanking new Marantz Cinema 50. Both were capable of driving the Polks to their limit without distortion or strain. Rounding out our home theater setup were our Klipsch in ceiling speakers for a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos system with our SVS 3000 micro subwoofer rounding out the speaker's bottom end. Now before you go blowing me up in the comments about using an almost $900 subwoofer on a system that can be had for roughly the same price, know that you can go with a more affordable subwoofer such as Polk's own XT12 at $299 or one of my other favorite budget subs, the Yamo S810. Neither are going to best the SVS, but they will bring enough boom to the party and will mate well with the XT speakers. Speaking purely subjectively, these speakers sound great. While it may seem like overkill to do an in-room measurement of a pair of sub $500 speakers, I had to confirm my suspicions. Taking a quick measurement, 20 to 20, the in-room measurements revealed a shockingly neutral response top to bottom. This is rare because a lot of budget speakers tend to do two things, boost the bass and accentuate the highs in an attempt to sound more dynamic and exciting. The X-T60 follows in the tradition of the R700, taking itself and you, the listener, more seriously, giving you a far more accurate sound. Again, this is a mostly neutral speaker with a good amount of bass for its size and a treble response that is detailed and articulate without coming across as forward or bright. In our room, bass was solid down to about 40 hertz. The speaker didn't really attempt to go lower than that, and while 40 hertz is still plenty deep for most music or for low level listening, for full range playback, a sub is 100% required. But with that disclaimer out of the way, the bass that is present is weighty and deeper feeling than its measurements convey. It's not the tightest, but by no means is it as resonant or as vague as what we heard and measured with the new Klipsch R800F towers, which cost almost twice as much. Much. The lack of port really helps the bass frequencies keep their composure, though as you go up the chain with Polk, you will appreciate greater finesse and detail in those lower octaves. As for the mid-range, it's gold. This is a neutral speaker throughout the mids without a lot of color being added to the sound on behalf of the cabinet. Sure, some added bracing or deadening would have solidified the edges of instruments and performers a bit more, but for a budget speaker, the X-T60 is nicely constructed. I especially love the way Lady Blackbird, Bjork, and Live sounded. And when it came to movies, dialogue was always clear and intelligible. Speaking of dialogue, let's talk about the Polk XT35 low profile center real quick. Construction wise and from a design perspective, I think it's a pretty cool little center, but sound wise, I do not 
recommend it. Despite measuring okay, the X-T35 is not a good sonic match for the X-T60, nor would I say it's all that clear. In fact, I had an easier time understanding dialogue when relying on the X-T60s to create a phantom center than I did using the dedicated one. The center speaker sounded woolly, congested, and small in comparison. I would instead steer you towards the X-T30 if you are looking for a center to match the X-T60s. The 30 just so happens to be cheaper than the 35, so go figure. Moving on to the highs, the X-T60s tout themselves as a high-res speaker, and given their frequency response, they're not going to miss a note. That said, as you turn things up, the tweeter loses some emphasis on some of its composure and becomes a bit two-dimensional and even exhibits some grain or more noticeable sibilance. But keep your volume under 90 dB or so and I doubt you're going to find the tweeter that objectionable. Thankfully, Polk has worked a bit of magic, keeping the tweeter from becoming too forward or aggressive without a great deal of roll-off. This means that detail is always on the menu, but listening fatigue isn't. As for soundstage and dynamics, both are excellent. The X-T60 disappears orally into a soundstage that has terrific depth and width with a nice center image. I would not say that the separation or focus within the soundstage is going to best speakers costing twice or maybe three times as much, but there is an appreciable level of refinement that isn't going to sound messy or start to outright smear together. Just don't expect a laser-focused presentation. Dynamics, nothing bad to report. Listen between 60 and 90 dB, and I think you're going to come away pretty impressed. At their price, there is absolutely nothing you need to be wary of, so let's just jump right into comparisons. Starting with the JBL Stage 190, the Polks do not play as deep, nor do they possess quite the same level of boost in the lower frequencies as the JBL. So for those of you who prioritize bass, the JBLs are probably the better sonic fit. But before you click Add to Cart, the JBLs can come across as a tad brighter or maybe more forward up top thanks to their metal dome tweeter and horn-like waveguide. Both speakers maintain a shock shocking level of composure when it comes to the highs. The JBLs do have just a hint more added detail by comparison. Both are great speakers, so if you're having a hard time choosing and are tight on space, the X-T60 is going to be the easier fit. Compared to the Klipsch R800F, the Polk is the better speaker, both subjectively and objectively. The R800F plays deeper, but the bass is messier. The Klipsch is rife with cabinet distortion and port noise, two things you do not get with the Polk. Because the R800F's highs are more boosted, the mids come off as leaner, whereas the Polk sounds more natural and organic, but also less live in comparison. For me, this isn't even a contest. I'd get the Polks all day. If you are dead set on getting a speaker from Klipsch's new reference line, the only one I recommend is the R50 bookshelf. Just know it's still not as good as the Polk. Compared to the Yamo S809s, the Polks, again, are more accurate, and for some of you, that's going to equal better. Now, I 100% prefer the build and styling of the Yamos, but understand that like the R800F, the Yamos have a sound. The S809s have a more smile-like curve, with boosted bass and accentuated treble. I can handle the Yamos, they don't outright bother me, but they don't automatically play as nice with a wide range of music or movies the way the Polks do. So if you are looking for a better all-rounder, the Polk X-T60 or larger X-T70 would be my pick. Finding a speaker as good as the X-T60 at its asking price of less than $500 a pair, $400 a pair if you buy them on sale, is like stealing. Most speakers in this class don't possess the beginnings of serious hi-fi performance the way the X-T60 does, and as a result, those types of speakers, they come off as flavors of the month rather than a speaker that you can enjoy for the longer haul. As impressed as I continue to be by our R700s, the X-T60, pound for pound, may be just a little bit more impressive. So that's it. That is now my review of Polk's X-T60 tiny little tower speaker. What do you think of them? As if anybody's even going to be able to concentrate on what I have to say until you compare them directly to the R700s. Really? Yeah, come on. You know this audience. Get get with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when I read your script, I was like, where's the R700 comparison that we all know people started typing two seconds into this thing. So just we're all waiting. Please you know, oh. hit me with it. All right, all right, all right. Um, look, the XT60 or XT70 for that matter are not budget R700s in hiding. The R700 is a demonstrably better loudspeaker. 
It just is. The XT60 is great, and I wholeheartedly stand behind everything I say in this review. But if you're thinking you're gonna get an XT60 and have, say, uh, 80, 90% of the R700, that is, uh, that's a no. <laughs> that is a no. Um, you obviously get better base with the R700. You have an equally neutral mid-range, though one that has a bit more body, one that can definitely handle uh, more volume, more dynamic swings with greater ease than the X-T60, and the high frequencies of the R700 are unflappable at just any volume. Also, soundstage-wise, um, because the R700 is so inert and well-built, you know, you get sharper focus, everything is just a little bit tighter. Um, so R700 is totally worth their asking price. XT60, way totally worth their asking price. But no, you're not going to end up with like 90% of the R700 for five, $400 uh, with the XT60. Okay. Fair? F yeah, absolutely okay. fair. I okay. completely agree. <sighs> Just had to get it out of the way. Yeah. Might as well get this one out of the way while we're at it. Oh, I Sony, CSS, whatever the hell they're calling that tower. Ser seriously, I cannot believe we're still talking about this speaker. <laughs> the only thing going for it is its, is its price. But, but yeah. again, I'm, I'm going to let you handle the specifics as to why it sucks. <laughs> um, look, I, I'm going off of what I know of the Sony based on when we had it back at our old house. And that was one of the few speakers that in, in our old space, like I measured, I actually busted out some gear and measured it because honestly, I don't get the appeal. And I just wanted to make sure that I was like doubly sure that I wasn't inventing something in my head. Um, look, I know that you can get a pair of the bookshelves for either free or a little over a hundred bucks, depending on when you buy them. The bookshelf speakers from Sony are not really going to be comparable here. The XT60s are better, but I am going to venture, uh, I'm going to venture and guess that even the XT bookshelf speakers from Polk, while maybe just marginally more expensive than the Sony's, are going to perform better. The Sony's are all upper mid range and treble to me. They, they, they just are, and they sound shrill. And when you turn them up, they can absolutely brutalize your eardrums if you are very, very, um, call it susceptible to high frequencies. If you're very picky about high frequencies, I would not go towards the Sonys. Plus, at higher volumes, and I'm talking like 80 to 90 dB, which for some of you, you may go, that's not high. Uh, at higher volumes, they distort like a mother. And so the Pulks, while also a cheap speaker, are a better cheap speaker. And yes, you are going to pay maybe 20, 40, hell, $50 more to go with the Polk, but you are getting a better speaker. Even when some, a speaker like the Sony is on sale, you know, when people are like, well, I picked it up for $79 a pair, $69 a pair. Understand Sony's not losing money when they sell you that speaker at bargain basement prices. So if you're able to pick something up for $69 a pair, understand that Sony is at a minimum, having to double their money, you know, plus cover the margins for whatever retailer you bought them from. And that means that when you're paying $189 or whatever retail is on this particular speaker, it's still a cheap, cheap, cheap speaker. And I'm not saying that the Polks or Yamo or Clips or anyone is any different. But just understand that if they can sell it to you for $60 to $70, eh, you're probably putting about... 10 to 15 bucks of actual Sony money into that speaker. Because after, you know, you have to cover your costs, make a profit, cover someone else's costs and have them make a profit. You know what I mean? Yeah, just do the math. Just do the math. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, now that that's all out of the way, okay. I feel like I can finally talk about them myself. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> I personally really like them. Yeah. I agree with you. No, they are not better than the R700s, mm -hmm. but I also didn't expect them to be. Mm -hmm. But you can hear some similarities. Sure. I would say that, you know, you maybe get 50%. I would even stretch it so much as 60 yeah. if you don't focus too much on the bass. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Which is, I think, respectable. 100%. Uh, I love their size. Oh, yeah. 
I think that, and I think that this is a really fantastic speaker to start to find your way into this little world of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, you may even decide you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. I know if I, I could, I could genuinely say, yeah, I could be pretty happy with these, oh, 100%. you know, and, and get off the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes knowing that you can maybe stop the chase is a really good thing. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the JBL Towers. Uh, I still think that those are some of the more underrated speakers uh, out there available right now. Mm -hmm. um, I would pick the JBLs over these um, yeah. if I had the room. But otherwise, you know, I think the Polk, these these particular mm -hmm. Polk speakers are honestly some of the better ones at, that we've heard. Even, it's, you know, obviously at this price range, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're really, they're very competent speakers. Yeah, I wish there was a few more finish options yeah. to choose from, but you know, I get it. At when you're when you're building something and you have to really keep it at a certain cost point, then those are those are the things you're going to lose out yeah. on as a customer. You're just yeah. not going to have a lot of options open to you. But if especially if you're looking to build a, a full home theater, I would definitely put these on your list. Well, anything else about the Polks? No. 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 All oh, right. I do oh. want to say one other thing. Okay. I just, I just want to say thank you. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> it's been kind of a hard week, um, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's taken the time to leave me a comment about my grandmother. It's really meant a lot to me, and I know to Andrew that that you guys you guys took time to to say something, and um, I just want to say she was a really important person in my life, and even at ninety four, you know, you're never ready to say goodbye, and um, so if there's someone you haven't talked to in a long time, or that you're waiting to think, oh, you have time. Remember, you never know how much time you have, so don't waste it. Anyway, thank you again. I really, really appreciate appreciated all your notes um, of encouragement and and love, and I can't tell you how much it mean to me, it meant to me. So anyway, thank you. Yeah, it was it was very awesome of all of you guys, and we do really, really appreciate it, and. Um, I'm very proud of this one for, uh, joining us today. She didn't have to, um, but I, I appreciate it. And I know everyone will appreciate your thoughts on what it is we're doing today. So yeah, it's been a rough, it's been a rough, uh, week and a half, but thank you. Thank you for bearing with us and for all of your support. We really do appreciate it. Um, that's it. That is our review of the Polk XT60 uh, Tower Loudspeaker. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, uh, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, know that that really helps the channel out tremendously. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy has left for you down below, know that that is another great way that you have shown your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that as well. Um, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. Uh, so remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.